Dr. Eileen Hale, the COO of Educators Worldwide and our program Teaching Tips for English Language Teachers. We have a special guest with us today from Tajikistan, and she has been a participant with us in a lot of our workshops and listener of our podcasts, and she has volunteered to share her expertise as a digital storyteller. Zebuniso Moradova, again from Tajikistan, is, uh, hello, how are you? We like to call her Zeb, <laughs> is that okay? Okay, that's fine. Well, hello, Eileen. I'm just Thank going you. to give a quick introduction for our listeners. Uh, Zeb okay. has over 17 years of teaching experience in the high schools and is now working as a, at an English resource center at the, her university coaching English language faculty with digital skills, helping and other resources for their teaching of English. So we're very excited to have her with us. She has an incredible background, having participated in two US State Department programs in 2009 with the Teaching Excellence and Achievement Award, and in 2011, a Fulbright Award. She also was uh, awarded the Alumni of the Year by her local U.S. Embassy in 2020 and has collaborated with a Fulbright Scholar from the United States to realize the beginning of her process with stor digital storytelling. And she's actualized it with the Access Program. Uh, so Zeb, I will turn it over to you if you can share with us a little bit more of how and why you got into this field of digital storytelling. And then we'll talk about the what it is and how we develop it as teachers. Okay, thank you very much, dear Aileen. And I'm so happy to be uh, here. And thank you for invitation. Uh, uh, invite me to this podcast. It's my first podcast and I will share with you my experience about digital storytelling. How I got to this field, uh, it was 2010, 2010 when I met with the, uh, when I hosted American teacher in my high school. And from that time on, we become uh, good friends. So still, we continue being friends together. When, we, when she finished her tea program, uh, she become alumni and I, I am also a tea program alumni. We get together and we wrote a grant we started the first step of digital storytelling but uh, in 2010 we started doing it in different platform like in movie maker we call it digital youth action project first of all students uh, did volunteer work community services and they took pictures and wrote narrative how they did their action projects. And then uh, when Joe Brexa came to Tajikistan, she taught us how to put these photos and how to record the voice and using the movie maker program to make a digital story. So we started this in 2010, but it was really a very good experience. Uh, we learned, my students learn about uh, taking photos in digital uh, camera and then uh, doing community service in their community, doing volunteer work, they learn it and uh, uh, they documented, they took all these photos and make a road narrative and then we put all of this together in digital, uh, in the movie maker. Then after 10 years, we again two alumni, she become Fulbright alumni again. And so we are T program and Fulbright alumni get together again and to do digital story again, in, but in different uh, platform in movie, not in movie maker, but in V video program. Uh, v video also was a very good program and new experience, new skills, everything is said there. So you don't need to record uh, your voice in uh, recording, uh, everything is in that program. So it was the program. So we wrote V video, we video.com. We uh, video, okay. Yes, we w, w, w E and V I D E O, video.com. Great, we'll uh, put that into the notes. 
Yes, uh, we purchased. Uh, th this is also free, but you can also purchase uh, to buy this program. So we bought this program through the grant money fund from funding. So we uh, did this project during pandemic time, during last year in 2020, with my access girls. We wanted to teach uh, my girls to digital storytelling. Uh, skills uh, and uh, but COVID-19 came and our project was uh, uh, we wanted to it was postponed because we cannot do it face to face so we redesign we redesign the model of it we make it hybrid hybrid digital storytelling and we couldn't involve 15 girls because of the pandemic we choose five girls and we made the contest, uh, the students who will submit the work by January 2020, the essay, why I am lucky to be access girl, access student. If they will follow the deadline, they will be accepted to this. So five students wrote and we accepted them. And uh, so they become the first five digital story telling participants and okay. we did it in September 2020. That's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing that background. Can you just give yes. a very succinct uh, definition for our listeners of what is digital storytelling? Like how do you define it in just a few words? It seems it's self-explanatory, yes. but just for our listeners, how do you define the concept of digital storytelling? Okay. Yes, I can define it. You know, for me, it was uh, uh, when Joe didn't come to Tajikistan, she said that you will be conducting it. And I was said, how? I don't know how to do it. And she said, I will teach you through Zoom, through Zoom meetings every evening. She taught me through how to get to the vvideo.com and how to write my first narrative, how to, then she edited it. Then I took photos, find family album and find my photos there and make my first digital storytelling in one month. It took me one month to make my first digital story. And then I become expert. And then I taught my students to do theirs. Uh, digital yeah. story but how i define it digital storytelling is a blend of video audio images text okay great a blend uh, of uh-huh the blend of the video the audio. audio images images also very important and the text narrative okay and you bring mix all of this together and you you bring your story to life through uh computers so through through digit digitally and digital storytelling allow individuals to use the di digital tools to use okay. their story and the digital story should be very short Okay, uh, when it you say be, short, like how long, for example? It, it should be two or three minutes. If it will be long, it will be boring. That's why it should be two, three minutes. And it should, the narratives that you will write should, uh, should be uh, two, uh, 250 or 300 words. So these um, points we explain to our students because we should keep our story short. That's probably one of the hardest parts, right? <laughs> because often yeah, that so story is much longer. Because, than... because we like to tell our story in detail. We want to say everything, okay. but it's a skill. To, you have to practice it. So that's why we ask girls when they write the narrative, you should uh, tell it to your, you practice it with your friends, with a family member, with a teacher, how to make it shorter to make it uh, 250 or 300 words. And uh, it should be short and it, the digital story should be told through, from the heart. So your story should touch when you touch your heart. So what else? Uh, so the uh, digital, uh, should I explain in the, uh, so the three words, digital storytelling, 
story and telling three words we know that digital means uh, refer to information provided uh, or stored in a mobile devices with internet yes and uh, we know the story it means uh, 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 telling information yes experience uh, your point of view story is a journey of our life yes and telling the power of telling is uh, telling is sharing of something when we tell something we want to share something to other people every day we do this yes when we go to school we say hi how are you and then you start telling us so you know yesterday i watched this movie or you know yesterday something happened to me or you know yesterday i went to the market and i bought something so we start telling and sharing our story the same happened to me at school every day i come to my high school open my door of my classroom and students enter after me and and start telling me teacher you know and they start telling me their stories and I start listening their stories because uh, I start that uh, I loved listening their stories and I, I found of from that time on I was fond of storytelling so digital storytelling is different like you make it to your stories through technology using the digital tools okay so this is my definition how is it <laughs> Okay, that's great. So digital, bringing in the imagery of the story. The story obviously is everybody's personal experience of in lives. And the telling is the voice. And obviously for our listeners, when your students are able to tell their stories, they're gaining linguistic fluency in the storytelling process. As well, uh, Zeb is going to share with us even the writing process and drafting is building a lot of great writing skills and editing skills. And bringing out the students' voices is very important to give them that sense of the importance of their voice and the value of sharing their voices. Can you just quickly share about yeah. how the folk tales you translated? And this is a also an idea to start with stories that are already in the students' first language, their mother tongue, and translate those stories into English is an incredibly powerful linguistic tool for them to learn grammatical structures, how you can't translate uh, literally uh, word for word. There's a yes. lot of nuances in language when you do translations. Go ahead. Absolutely agree. Yes. And the idea of using the folk tales come to me in 2007 when I uh, uh, become interested, when I was in one of the conferences, I attended one of the Central Asian conference, and I saw how the teachers incorporated uh, folk tales in their lessons. And I come back with a full of ideas after the conference, usually I come and I want to implement right away to practice everything on my students. And I asked, I created, I launched an English club at school because you can't do project works at your English lesson because it's 45 minutes and students are 35 students in class. So it's not enough time, no. So I created English club. I launched English club after school. And I asked my students to bring folk tale in native language. And because I wanted to start with a story which is familiar to them. And we started with a goat with and seven kids, which is very popular in every culture, yes? And when uh, we uh, students first uh, uh, start uh, to translate it into English, of course, the grammar of English and Tajik is different. When students start to translate it into English, they see uh, we corrected uh, the grammar differences. Uh, and uh, also we assign different roles. For example, those who are good a little bit in uh, translating skills, they will do translating part. And we need, a, we also had student who was good at drawing. We ask them to draw one fragment of the story, illustrate uh, drawing. So we wanted to have our own pictures. And uh, another student, uh, we asked uh, to type uh, to type the story in computer because digital skills uh, also was very important. We wanted uh, for students it was new when to sit in computer and type uh, this uh, uh, story. And then I connected my student 
with the world. So I bring my classroom to the world. I, I found a Pakistani uh, teacher who also interested in folktales and we connected to each other. I shared my story, they shared their folktale and then we analyze, uh, we find the moral of the story, we discuss it in the forum. And then my students find out that not only we have the goat and seven kids, they have two. So stories helped my students understand that uh, stories, uh, it's not only you own it. So it's a globally every, so in every culture, it has just different name, but the, the meaning is the same. And uh, we like it. Sorry. So, that's a very uh, beautiful point to make. And as we are a global organization, the idea of sharing stories cross-culturally and seeing what you have in common and how many folk stories throughout uh, history carry the same moral values for human interaction, right? Doing good to others or doing unto others as you would have somebody do unto you, that kind of idea. And you know, uh, and we didn't stop on this. Next year, with another student, we, I continue doing the story, but differently. So students start reading aloud stories in different classes. So I wanted that they improve their uh, public speaking to, to present in public because a lot of students are lack of confidence. They are shy. I want it through Foktel, through Foktel project, I achieve all my goals. I wanted my student become confident. I wanted my student become from shy student into a public speakers, a leaders, a volunteers. And, uh, and of course the last to become exchange students <laughs> to go uh, to, to, to become cultural ambassadors of their country in another country. So my, I reached all my goals through this project, Folktail. That's amazing. So just for the sake of our time, of our listeners, we know most of us know the elements of a story. I'll just read quickly. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you can see the slides, the setting, plot, conflict, character, point of view, and themes of the story. Um, and you have a slide talking about stories have a beginning, middle, and end, and the importance of discussing the climax. Do you want to quickly add anything to this? And then we'll go on to some more of the details of the how and the why. Uh to the element of the stories, uh, yes, it's very clear when I was teaching the folktale, students already were familiar about these elements, the important, yes, elements, characters, plot, the, the problem and solution, and uh, also the three parts, the beginning, middle, and end. But when we start teaching uh, uh, digital story, we come across with different uh, words like, uh, uh, the, so the beginning will be the hook and rising tone can be a, uh, if, uh, it will, can be a uh, climax, yes, the turning point and then falling tone can be a, uh, a solution. So students, my students, were uh, not familiar with this. So when I started, when we start writing our narrative, uh, when I we, when I start teaching uh, the digital story, the elements uh, of it, I introduce my students with these terms. They should okay. know it. The terminology. Yeah, that's great. Very important. It was new for them. This part okay. was very new. Yes, I can imagine. That's that's really important. I appreciate that. And you also have mentioned the power of storytelling. And we mentioned this a little bit earlier, uh, the power of sharing your story with somebody else, finding your voice. Do you want to mm -hmm. elaborate any more on that? And, and the parts of speaking, reading, writing, listening that are included in storytelling as well? Uh, yes, uh, the power of telling. Telling, as we told you, it's sharing, yes. Uh, telling, sharing something with other people. And my girls, these five girls that we taught the digital story, they created their 
personal narrative from their own lives, their own personal stories. And we ask them, do you, uh, are you ready to share it? Because this is personal. They didn't share it with their parents. They didn't share it anywhere. So we ask them, are you ready to share your voice? Are you ready? Because at the end of when they created the story, we invited their parents. And they, in front of their parents, showed, yes, their voice. They had a voice. They told their story to their parents. And uh, of course, their parents don't know English, but we asked them to translate uh, their uh, presentation, their stories, the narrative into native language when they listened their when they heard their their girls their their voices their story touched their heart they start looking at the girls differently from that time on they start treating them differently when later i ask them they say my parents now want me to go to study at the university they have their dreams they they believed in us they 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 become different their attitude toward us become different and this uh, power of telling includes speaking reading speaking writing and listening skills so i will start with listening when when students start writing their personal stories we ask them to tell to each other first we sit in a circle so they when they wrote their stories narrative we ask them to read it to each other so they to de develop empathy yes when they listen you can imagine yourself in someone's shoes so another tip you can do it in my next time so when, for example, I tell my story, for example, to you, Aileen, you will tell the story, my story from the per first person, like your story. So it, my story will be yours. So you will tell the story ah, as if uh, it was me. From the first person. So this I would tell your story. Good. Yes. And, uh, and when you will tell your story, I will tell it from my, like my story from the first person. So the students will practice it, telling the story from the first person or the third person. So it will be a good practice. So it, it will develop active listening, which is very important skill yeah. uh, during my practice in my teaching career. My students are lack of listening skills. They don't listen to each other. When they uh, do their part, when they come to the blackboard and tell the homework, everybody listens to them. When she finished, she, she sit down and she doesn't listen to another one, to her partner. She will do her work because I want to develop the skills through this digital storytelling, through storytelling, even through folk tales. I wanted the student tell the story and everybody listen. And then I will ask them, tell the story from the first person, tell the story from the third person. And uh, they... Uh, so in such way we develop active listening yeah and speaking yes yeah, speaking uh, writing you know by, by writing the narrative yes they practice writing the narrative according to this element this uh, element mm, like a book. A the... they should follow this element of uh, writing uh, uh, the story and uh, the and uh, speaking, uh, the, the speaking is at the end, yes, when showcase, at the showcase, you can invite, because we create story for sharing, we yeah. create the story, stories should be shared, that's why the, the main goal creating the digital story is to share to someone, that's, you give a message through your story, you have a message, you want that someone hear your story and learn something from your story. And that's why we practice here speaking. So here, we, I taught my student how to present, presentation skills. Yeah. Before to present your story, I taught them some skill of presenting, how you should stand, how you use your gestures, I mean, what your posture, how should be your voice. So every, all of these are skills. 
I have thought. So you see digital store is not only the video, audio, image. There are other skills that it is. I have taught them. The presentation skills, critical thinking, active listening, uh, public speaking skills. So everything is included there. So in such a way, we included this, all this, all these four skills are uh, we included in creating digital stories. That's extremely important for all, as we know, of language educators and language learners, the importance of developing all these skills and these sub skills, as you say, active listening is yes. so important. Presentation is so important. So thank you for sharing all those. I'm going to quickly explain, we have a slide again, I encourage our listeners to watch the YouTube of this presentation because there's a lot of valuable information that you can visually see. Uh, Zeb has shared a digital storytelling process slide with us, which includes step one, writing a proposal, step two, researching, exploring, and learning, step three, writing the script, step four is the storyboard, which I'd like her to elaborate on in just a minute. I'll uh -huh. just finish the steps and then you can tell about the storyboard. Step uh -huh. five is gathering images, creating the audio and creating the video. Step six, putting it all together. Step seven, sharing it. Step eight, reflecting and getting feedback. So if you could share, I'm going to jump to the slide. You have that, here it is, the storyboard slide. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you use this? We have an image of this again in our slideshow on the YouTube. How do you use a storyboard to help students prepare their story visually? Sketching yes. out their ideas. Great. When our narratives are done, when our narratives are recorded, the next step is storyboard. So I shared with my students the template of storyboard, as you can see in PowerPoint. Uh, so there are six uh, squares, yes. And we, uh, what help? What uh, what help us the storyboard? So story storyboard is very important. It help us to plan and find the photos and the videos that you can include in your digital story so you will it's like a think uh, i ask my students think about the storyboard as a comic strip if you're planning and capturing uh, or draw simple sketches and notes so the reason why it's important you can visualize you can visualize what your story will look like in advance I like what you said about it being like a comic strip because most of us yes. are familiar with the comic strip and you could show them that bring to class a, a comic strip it's easy to find in most newspapers hopefully these days or find mm -hmm. one online. And for those of you who are just listening, the way the storyboard is portrayed you have a place to write your notes on one side and then you choose an image that matches fits in with that part of your story. So again, it helps your students to select images appropriate to a certain section of their story. So that's an important yes. aspect of developing your whole story, choosing the yes. appropriate images that you want to highlight, correct? And, and it also help you if you just, you put images and drawing, and then you can make changes when you are in the developed process before you already can set each sit in computer and put all the story together. So when you visualize, you see, oh, I need to change this part. So you can go back to the narrative and change something. So it's visually storyboard, it's very good. It can help you um, to make some changes before you put all the stories together in computer. Great. Can you also share about, you mentioned the importance of a teacher first sharing his or her story with their students, um, how you did this and the importance of this, why you share your story first and how to create your story as a teacher? Mm -hmm. So um, my, uh, I could, first of all, uh, before we teach, uh, uh, someone a skill we we should be example first yes because the students might ask you do you have your own story teacher because we need as a teacher have our example to show before the uh, making this workshop we, I uh, showed my students my digital story uh, which I 
created. And my story was uh, devoted to my aunt, whom we lost in COVID-19. And uh, uh, it was a very sad story, and it was a personal story. I wasn't ready to share it. But when I created it, I stories, it's like a healing. It's like when you create it and put it, it you, when you finish it, it's like a therapy. You feel relief. Because when you put your story on the paper and then make it digitally through technology, after it, you feel very relieved because uh, it's like a uh, therapy, storytelling, uh, story, stories like digital stories, like a, uh, uh, how to say, it's like a uh, healing, give you healing. And I created my first digital story. I shared to my students. Before I shared it to my students, I wanted to check it, if I learned it or no. And I have seven years old son, whom I also teach English and we speak English at home. And I wanted to practice on him because he also know computers. Uh, but I wanted to practice him uh, to use V video. V video is very, very easy platform. Even the seven years old boy could uh, manage it and did it. I just explained it where to go to record your voice and then how, where to go to upload your images and how to drag and put your images here and then how to find music to your story and then how to uh, uh, to put uh, 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 what to say, how to say it, uh, how to put all this together and then uh, publish it to create. So I, I taught my son and he prepared his first digital story in this program and I recorded it. And wow. when I start my first workshop, my girls, when I say, okay, girls, this is digital storytelling project. And you, at the end of the project, you will create your own story and, sh and share it by us. Share it. That's wonderful. I just want to reiterate the importance as teachers for us, as Zeb explained, to go through the process yourself is going to help you teach much better. Obviously, when we have to learn something first and wrestle with the process of putting images in and video editing and those kind of things, we'll have much more understanding of maybe the challenges that some of our students mm -hmm. might face. I was gonna add for those of our listeners, a great place to start even for storytelling with your classes is have students tell the story of what COVID has been like for them, uh, trying to work at home and all those challenges. As Zeb mentioned, it's kind of a therapeutic process because there's been a lot of frustrations for most of us and adapting to this new style of learning is very challenging for many of us and teaching. So having them share the stories of what it's been like for them to do this at home might be a way for them to also process that experience and share funny and also sad stories of the reality of sharing, living through COVID and trying to learn during this time. Let's quickly uh, go through, we just have a couple minutes left. If you don't mind um, sharing the summary of, sorry, beginning the writing process, uh, beginning thinking of the purpose of your story, how you focus your students to think about the purpose, the audience, uh, how to tell the story in just a few minutes, how to draft a script as we talked about on the storyboard, looking for what she describes as the arc of the story, like the climax of the story, sharing your script with others and getting feedback to improve the script, that can be with vocabulary, with wordiness, finding more precise synonyms to tell your story, idioms, and again, repeating the process until you finally get to your final product. You mentioned also a WhatsApp group and how you incorporated that. Could you share how you use the WhatsApp group for your students to share their stories as part of this process? <clears throat> she created a WhatsApp group for her students to be able to share back and forth their narratives. 
Uh, we also had a podcast for our listeners a few weeks ago when we talked about the app called Vocadu, which is another way to share oral stories. Again, practicing telling your story out loud at home with family members, brothers and sisters, wherever you can. Um, doing it in class in story circles, it can get loud, but it's a great place uh, for students to practice listening and give. Uh, we don't hear you, Zeb. Can you hear me now? Zeb also has a slide if you are on our YouTube about taking pictures and how to find themes and find photos to uh, coincide with the theme of your story. So she has a little graph that shows the themes, for example, of happiness, love, prayer, loneliness, sickness, loss, pandemic, education, strength, resilience, and a space to put a photo for each of these themes. This is just an example you could use in your classes. When we are in the recording, uh, the recording needs to be done with the narrator's voice, making it, that's part of the development of using our voice in a recording and how to perform in front of others with the personal voice, the inflections that you need to use and how to make sure that your intonation is correct so people can understand you. So make sure that practice, practice, practice is a very important part of recording and re-recording as much as writing and rewriting. Uh, Aileen. Uh, hey, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, thank you, sorry. Uh, I wanted to mention Aileen about that. I forgot to say that every digital story should have a theme. You should, uh, we know that in storytelling, every story has a theme like a love or uh, a friendship, yes? So uh, we, as we told that we created our digital story during pandemic time, and we give the theme to our story, resilience. So before, uh, on the first workshop, before showing my digital story, I have to explain to students what is resilience, the topic. We should open this topic because this word was new for them. And they couldn't, they, they, I explained them in English, they still have no uh, uh, idea how resilience is, how to be resilient. So you, and I show them an image of it, how one flower get out from the ground from in the desert like or from a very dried land it's like a hope it's like a courageness yes it's like coping from a stress like it's, it's like a, um, having a courage yes to be strong to come back to your previous shape so i to bounce back yes so i explain first of all the topic the theme of my resilience what is resilience and your story should be around this topic yes that's great um when we lost you on the line for a minute i shared about the graphic you had of images and the topics the themes thank you for sharing uh, that okay uh, the t the photos yes you yes. mean the photos and this was also a very interesting activity when we done everything now it was time for photos oh i we did first of all we ask my students, look at your narrative and highlight the keywords with the highlighter, like yeah. happiness, love, prayer, for example, lonely. These words are from their narrative. And then we ask them, how do you, uh, can you, what, what image could you, represent to this topic to the word happiness what image what yeah. photo could you bring yeah fantastic and just for i described that a little already um so just for the sake of our time we're going to need to wrap up i wanted okay. you to share the outcome and impact of digital storytelling and how you presented at a tsol convention in 2021 wow. and the girls became finalists can you share just a bit yes. about 
not only that specific, but in general, all your students, how it's impacted their confidence as language learners and language speakers in the classroom. Great, how great. Storytelling really helps overall language acquisition. Yes, yes Aileen, it was great pleasure. So digital storytelling provided a great opportunity for my girls to develop their, first of all, literacy skills, building communicative skills, communication skills, sorry problem solving, critical thinking, of language fluency, sharing, collaboration. And uh, uh, my girls, uh, my, these five girls, uh, uh, we become uh, presenters in the, uh, we presented this, uh, the, this digital story project and these five stories of these girls we presented in the present in the TESOL convention in March 2021. So my girls, we make a video. So we ask, the, we recorded all the girls and they told all the process of the, uh, remember you showed the cycle, the steps of the storytelling. These yeah. five girls retold all the steps and we will make a video of it, of it and we presented it in TESOL. And two of my girls become flex student, exchange students. And two of my girls got the access mini grant and they, cre they wrote a project, uh, a social project. Uh, they did a, re a, a project in the reading club, developing reading skills through uh, telling tales in one public school. For one month, they did a workshop how to develop uh, reading uh, skills, critical thinking through reading tales. So That's you see that this project changed these girls. So they, uh, be, from storytellers, they become presenters and then exchange students. Now, two of them are in America now. Really? Having a fun. They got a grant to come to America from the storytelling, huh? This helped them. This storytelling telling was a good uh, platform for them, a good foundation for them. It helped them to become, to achieve to their dreams and goals. That's wonderful. So now you're not only developing language learners, you're developing them as entire people for their career, for their life, uh, with many, many skills beyond just the skills within storytelling. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Zavoniso, for sharing these wonderful tips. Let's just summarize for our listeners. Uh, mm -hmm. First, again, we want you as a teacher to develop and share your story to your students as a way to open the platform of digital storytelling. You obviously have to show them uh, things like we video as an example. There's another one called Voca Do, which we shared in another podcast. Um, we can put that up for you as well. That's a way to share the audio part of stories. Mm -hmm. Consider the purpose of your story. Consider the audience, the length of your story. So you keep it to, as Zeb mentioned, just two to three minutes. The drafting mm -hmm. of the story, the arc of the story. Having time for story circles in your classroom. And this can take place both in and outside the class. So if you're still doing hybrid learning or some online learning, they can do this through WhatsApp or other platforms in your country. Uh, the mm -hmm. process of finding photos, the storyboarding process. If anybody needs uh, the support for that, please reach out to us. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> getting feedback to repeat the process. Zevani, so if people want to reach you, uh, would you like to share an email or any way to reach you if they want further information uh, about digital storytelling? Yes, absolutely. Should I share my email here? Sure, I can put it in our notes as well. Um, you can say it out loud for us and then we'll have it in the notes for our listeners. Okay, so m mzeboniso at gmail.com. Here is my email, so you can write me. And if you uh, want to learn more about digital uh, storytelling uh, uh, skills, uh, ex my experience, I can share you a lot. I have 
Uh, it's so difficult to tell it very shortly. So I like to tell everything in detail. If you contact me, I will share you pictures and more detail. So please feel free to write me. Here is my email, mzeboniso at gmail.com. Thank you so much. And we will put that into our uh, chat notes as well as the YouTube. That's M as in Mary, Z, Zebra, E, P, O, N, I, S, O at gmail.com. And follow us. We have a Facebook group, a T, T, E, L, T. We have Instagram, Twitter. Please follow us and subscribe so that you can be part of our groups. We'd love to have your input and suggest other wonderful people like Zebaniso as a podcast interviewee. You can email us at tteltinfo with any, at gmail.com with anyone you would like us to interview, even yourself, if you have a special expertise to share with us. Thanks so much for joining us today, Zebaniso. We really appreciate your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone, or evening, wherever you are. And we'll look forward Thank to seeing you hopefully this Saturday for our live workshop. Yes, thank you very much, dear Aileen, for inviting me and sharing my experience with you all. Thank you very much. I enjoy it. We've had a, such a pleasure to have you, Zebaniso. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm.